guys recording all right so yeah it's just i'm right just, just like before both- you start are you able to record if you go to the three buttons i that's just network- press record to cloud is that what yep. it is you're good all right thanks perfect perfect so i'm do you want to give a couple of words about what you think about investing, what it is, what it means to you? Of course. Um, it's a way to grow your capital. It's a way to be able to, you know, put your money to work and allow it to grow over time at an exponential rate. The problem, and also because given your, your age and your time horizon and your risk tolerance, you're the boss like me i'm i'm 28 you know if you're like if someone's like 30 you know you've still got you know in the uk United kingdom for example the the working age for your pension is about like 70 so for me i've got another you know, 42 year time horizon so they would be you know someone like myself i can afford to take risks over the longer term to generate you know superior uh, ret- returns over time because i'm not looking at building my wealth overnight. It's not going to be a, a five minute, one day, two day, one month, one year. You know, you know, I'm looking to do this over, over my lifetime. And of course, you know, uh, it's how you, you plan and you prepare, not just for yourself. You know, if you have dependents, if you have a family member, um, if you depend on someone and, you know, you feel like you can, you can guide them in terms of like how they can manage their, 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 their expenses to be able to, you know, set aside, um, whatever amount of income is feasible for them to, to invest in, in, in the market, whether that's, you know, the various products such as, you know, an ETF, whether that's selecting a, a stock, whether that's, you know, selecting alternative uh, asset classes uh, to invest in, such as, you know, commodities or, or bonds or, or, you know, certificate Rizzo. deposits or, or, or various other mm-hmm. different things. No, uh, mm-hmm. which we will we'll dive into later on. You have an array of things to do, but the key thing is because there's such a a wide array of alternative asset classes, you can decide which one or which ones to have and be diversified, which is the king. The idea isn't just to put all your eggs in one basket. The idea is to ensure that you know good times, bad times, you're good. And even now, like with the markets are rocky, I can say Alhamdulillah, like you know, I'm good. You know, because at the end of the day, I would think to myself of my time horizon and think to myself, okay, I have these goals that I've done, you know, written down to myself, um, I want to achieve. So in order to achieve these goals, I can, as you said, put money aside, and just living in a savings account. But a hundred pounds today is a hundred pounds. It's not a hundred pounds tomorrow. At the end of the day, given the concept of the time value of money, know the hundred dollars that you had five years ago when you spent it five years ago isn't the same as the hundred dollars you have today because at the end of the day the amount of the value of the the dollar or or cash in general deteriorates over time we'll we'll Do explain you. those points one by one too yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm just saying so that, just giving uh, them an oversight so you absolutely. don't want to be left just with with the with, with money that's just losing value on a daily basis but you want to be able to deploy that capital in, a, in, in, in an intelligent and meaningful way. So, you know, you look to invest. And of course, investing in the market allows you to also, you know, grow your capital. And we will actually, you know, delve, delve into this now. So, Am, would you please uh, move on to the next slide? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing also that I'm, uh, I think I'm, uh, was leading towards is that he's comparing putting your money on the side in a savings account, a regular bank account, and just having it sit there (laughs) instead of, exactly, instead of actually investing it and having it make money. So uh, before we start, this is a quick exercise. Everyone, please write one question that you would like to understand. And at the end of the day, we'll see if we've covered that or if we've answered that question or not. So, you know, throughout the thing, just write your question whenever you're ready and we'll start off with it. Okay. Uh, All right, so why do people invest? 
Investing is the fastest and the most secure way to build wealth in human civilization history. This is a quote from Charlie Munger. Now, when someone says the fastest and most secure, the fastest and most secure way to build wealth in human civilization history. Now, us as human beings, we've been here for over 2000 years. So you think now we figured out the way to become wealthy and do it in the most secure way. Well, the thing is, back in the day, people used to do things that are illegal to make this kind of money, warmongering and stuff like that. This is legal, straightforward. There was never a way that you can honestly put your money where a place where you can see it and see it grow and push. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I got to keep an eye on the chat. That's coming yeah, personal. We'll, we'll, we'll what is the best way? Uh, yeah, the yeah. Level. We'll get to these questions. Um, for the one thing about the market is that, the, yeah, I mean, you can see everything happening. You can see what you bought. You can see where it's going, why you bought it, um, what other people think about the same exact product that you're looking at, and basically, let me put it this way. Let's say you have, uh, Am has a pizza place and the pizza place can only serve three people at a time, but the pizza place is getting really popular. Why? Because Am has these really, really nice, uh, selections that he had, you know, I live in America. One thing that we struggle with in America is having halal meat. I imagine halal I'm bringing out a pizza with some halal pepperoni and stuff like that. So it's nice. Now, Amr wants to expand his store, but he doesn't have the money to expand his store. So he comes to me and says, Amr, he's Amr and I'm Amr. So I don't want you guys to uh, get thrown off. But he comes to me and he says, I'm, I want to make this place fit now six to 12 people instead of three. And I need a thousand dollars from you. And for this thousand dollars, I'll give you half of my place, like half the ownership of the restaurant. So I give him the thousand dollars because I, I'm a, I know I'm, I know him as a person. I know his products. I know that it will do good. I believe in him. My research around this product, which is his restaurant itself is knowing the product. I know the history of the place. I know the ownership. I know everything. So I put my money. I'm going to expand the store. The store becomes so big that he has enough money by himself now to make it into a place that fits 24 people. So when I invested the 1,000, it was for 12. So now that I'm doubled it, what happens to my investment? It's a very logical, easy question, no trick question. My investment that was worth $1,000 before, it's now $2,000. Why? We went from because, this. Because the, exactly. He went from small to big, but the value of what you did grows with that. And that is what investing is. You get into something, you buy into a company, you buy shares from a company that you believe in, you do your research, you understand it, and then you use that company as your piggy bank. And you just keep putting money in and in. And the more you see that company grow, the more your capital will grow, which is what you put in, will, which basically you know, makes you worth more money. Uh, one thing I mentioned earlier, which was capital, Capital and income growth over time. Capital growth, capital in general, is the amount of money you put in, the big lump sum of money or the money that you keep putting in. Income growth is when you see that your capital is increasing and you're getting money out of it. There are ways that we will discuss that you can not just invest in a stock and leave it there to increase. You can actually also invest in certain things that will keep paying you without you having to sell. Now, one last thing here is it's an opportunity to become an owner of a company that you like and see yourself invest in their future. 
So these these are the basic things. Now, I want to just talk about for one second about who Charlie Munger is. If anyone has heard of Warren Buffett, if you have, then good. If you don't, please, 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 when this is done, go online. Google who Warren Buffett is. Read any book about him. Understand who he is. Because if this is the type of person that we will, most people like to model their investment strategies on. Why? Because him and Mr. Charlie Munger are basically best friends and partners in their company. And since the 50s have been investing slowly into companies and what, and they just watch them grow. And now Warren Buffett is top five richest people, most wealthiest people in the world. And Charlie Munger is as well. But Charlie Munger does not show himself out there like that. Now, basic, basic definitions. Um, I'm, you want to start with the stock? Yeah, of course. Um, stock or equity, equity as in equity ownership within a business itself. So if you. Yeah, no, no, not so much. Okay, I'm gonna just mute everybody. Um, can you nope. restart because uh, your voice cut out for a while? Yeah, Talking my about. computer was bugging out. Sorry about that. Is it okay now? Yeah. So yeah, so um, an equity or stock or an equity is investing okay. into and owning part of a, a company. So for example, if you said, I want Apple and I believe in Apple and you bought an Apple share, then you're saying to yourself, okay, I believe Apple is going to keep growing. I believe that Apple is going to go from being not just an iPhone, iPad thing, but maybe like a, a health part of the health, they're like health in terms of like not just Apple watches, but even like go beyond that. Maybe be like something used in hospitals or, or, or something which can be expanded even further than what they've already done from TV to music to, to, um, to their stores which offer you know various like products themselves which are only unique to them so you're exposing yourself to their supply chain risk so for example if uh, there's a warehouse in china or something that's delaying um you know shipments of iphones and let's say the uh, there's a fear in the market about it and there's a bit of uncertainty then you're willing to say okay it's fallen a little bit but i believe in it so going back to your analogy earlier um using it as your piggy bank. Because you believe in it long term and you believe this company has so much growth, maybe they'll have you know electric vehicles. So when you see there's a little like fear in the market or uncertainty, you treat it as your piggy bank and you buy more and you own more. So that when times are good, or uh, you are also, regardless of how the company does, you are paid, as you said, income, which is touched on the slide before, which is in the form of a dividend. Now, if we go into bonds, bonds are, corporate or municipal or treasury uh, with uh, corporate bonds you're basically doing the opposite you are um, basically I'm, sorry do you want let's go back a step let's explain to everybody what bonds are in general yeah and that's what I'm going going into now. so with the bond it's basically you are owning part of a debt of a company so you have your corporate your municipal and your treasury bonds um with a corporate bond you're owning the debt of a company so Let's say um, General Electric, for example. If you were buying their um, their 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 bonds, their corporate bonds, then you would be essentially lending to them by buying those corporate bonds. But in the event of uh, a, a company defaulting, because you are the bondholder, if things happen, then when it comes to liquidation or the company falling apart and having to sell its assets. And you are at first in line to be paid as opposed so, to sorry, go let ahead. me ask you a question now. Why do why how are bond what are they or what is the reason for them? Let's say that like why would a company issue bonds or tell people I want to borrow money from you? You I'm like why would GE come to you and say, I want to borrow this money? 
Of course. And this goes down to two key characteristics between equities, stocks, and bonds. Equities will give you a variable rate of return. It may do something amazing. It may do outstanding. You may be thinking, I'll get 5% and it gives you 30%. With a bond, it's a fixed rate of return. So the uh, bond holder is receiving a fixed rate of interest uh from the uh the person who was issued the bond who was who was who was actually uh lending lending you uh who you were actually lending the money to so for example um if general electric say okay we'll issue these bonds at two percent per annum then for whatever i pay general electric whatever okay, bonds i have this, i'm only this, giving this two percent sorry about <laughs> Sorry. Um, so let's say let's say general electric uh guys i'm yeah. gonna please please me uh thank you for muting um okay so let's say general electric let's go back to the question yeah. general electric said i want to issue bonds yeah right and you said i want to buy these bonds what is the reason for them fixed rate of return and if the company like goes belly up then la, la, la. Liquid, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So when yeah. the company, so I get a fixed rate of return. So like, let's say two percent. And if the company is liquidated and goes belly up, then whenever they sell their assets, the first in line to receive the money to be compensated for the company like defaulting is me. I'm the bondholder. So I'm the one who owns the debt. So I have legal obligations and rights to the actual mm -hmm. assets of the company. In the but, event uh, of a liquidation or a default, these this is the rights that the bonds give you, right? That's what you're yes. saying. Yani, al bond la matistariu bidik hukuk al sharika, but still, da la mani dik al hukuk. Nahna darin nitkalam an al bond azatu husnu. So let me put it in a in a way. Yeah, yeah it's for, it's a fixed return uh, and security. La, 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 this is guaranteed. Uh, no, no, it's not the fixed return. I'm sorry. It's bonds in general and stocks in general are made for companies to raise money. Yeah. Yani, they, when we go back in the example, في المثال بتاع عمر and the pizza place, مثلاً عمر ما ده يريد دي, uh, he doesn't want to give anyone, مثلاً حقوق في شركته, he doesn't want to give pe more people ownership. He wants to keep it 50-50 between me and him. So he already, يعني أدى half of his stocks, al shares بتاعته لينا. So he can't give more because he loses yeah, the ownership of the company. So he issues bonds. The bonds are like, in uh, business terms, it's called IOU. IOU is no, I don't know what you're doing. So he comes to get a corporate bond and he says, if I get $1,000 today, I want to give it for 10 years. And every year, I want to give it to you. 2% interest. Exactly. So, so in the end, after 10 years, I'll give you Bakuna data come Is that what it is? Exactly. Well, yeah, your par, your, your actual value, the original let that plus the interest over the 10 years. I'll fed it when a bond was stocks come on, and a bonds give you more rights. Lemon, because I'm the Google Lemon Zema Amgal, low Mesa Am shut down his pizza place, has a Kuluzol Gal, and I want my money back. I'm gonna stand in one stocks. I'm gonna stand in one line. The bond guys, I give a few stuff. I give a few Who do I give first? I go the lenders. And bonds. You give them all of the money that they are owed. But then al baggy, that's what goes into the stock people. Exactly. Equity holders. But you know, yeah. the stocks is that you, you get, can get voting rights. returns because of the voting rights. And also with the voting rights, you can put pressure on the companies to make changes. So, you know, for exactly. example, climate change, uh, push for diversity on the board. You know, you can say like, how come, you know, there's not people of color? How come there's, you know, not no women on the board? If you have like mm -hmm. lots of equity in the company, like pension funds and asset managers do, then you can advocate. And you could push for this uh, annual general meetings and enforce the changes. But also as well with with uh, stocks, yeah, if there's an mm -hmm. outperformance, then instead of just getting you know this fixed two percent, 
because the company did so well, they can give you a special dividend, a bonus dividend. So instead of giving mm-hmm. you just like, like six cents, let's say on top of that, we'll give you an extra 20 cents as a bonus. Yeah. You know, in terms of like rewarding you for willing to support the company, back them and take on that risk and believing in them, you're compensated. Like for example, today, Costco raised their dividend by 12% because they've done so well throughout this last year and they've made so much, they feel like they can give more to the stockholders in, in the form of dividends. Perfect, perfect, beautiful. Now, there are three types of bonds. So, the corporate bond, the BGM Nasherikat, any company that wants to raise money without giving losing their power, they will issue these. Municipal, um, municipal bonds are issued usually by your city. Yeah, yeah. Not, not by the country itself. Yeah, and has it, uh, London wants to raise money, Masalan Yibnu, uh, Yibnu, a new um, electric grid, Lil Medina Kulla, and help out half of the city to update their internet or their 5G, Masalan, their 5G towers. They're not going to pay from their pocket to build the towers. They will issue bonds. Begul and Nas, here you go, please. We want to borrow money from you. And we'll give you this much back. Uh, so please give us your money, basically, to do this. Yeah, can I chime now, in on that? Example of please. that, a big one, Biden's plan. Building EV stations, mm-hmm. building, uh, you know, infrastructure, improving the roads, improving the, uh, improving the 5G connectivity within multiple regions, especially rural regions. And also mm-hmm. improving, like, you know, um, communication, the schooling system, distribution, cooling system, it's all part of that. So it wouldn't be just like a, a general plan. If every region issues these debts, which is why you've seen now, like, for example, like in the pandemic or even not in a pandemic, every region in the world, every government, every area, every council, every city issues its own municipal bonds to raise capital and the people who tend to take these on tend to be institutions such as you know pension funds or or you know asset managers NGOs exactly. NGOs. Yeah, mm-hmm. NGOs would take them on as well for example yeah. because they think it's yep. safe because mm-hmm. for example a charity a charity would take that on because it's a fixed rate of return because a charity wouldn't take risk on on the, the income generated mm-hmm. from donations for example because also you know to pay their staff and to ensure that all their obligations are met and, and then some and so i'll continue on to treasury treasury all right treasury is what you exactly what's saying now in the message joe biden wants to uh sorry we got ahead joe biden that is Salah al villain oh he wants to fix the bridges and everything that we have so the one thing he wants to do is sell treasury bonds a treasury bonds data are sold by the main government of the com- uh, the country. Falfering in a municipal is small in comparison to the to the treasure uh, the treasury bonds. Now, why? Yeah, Nimesa. Why are is the country between the treasury bonds is the uh, municipal biamilu? Because it's um, yeah, when when the government gets that kind of money, it has to go everywhere. In a, in a way that fits everyone. But when you do the same thing with municipal bonds, then every city, every region has the power in Yemen to have the money to do whatever they need to do. Now, FIFA Rigwa had been a corporate municipal and treasury. Municipal and treasury bonds are tax free. Well, corporate bit of taxes, which means if your bonds are people okay if your bonds uh once you need they expire مثلا, the corporate bond they tell you it's for 10 years we borrowed this money and this is how much you get back and when 10 years are over that money has to be in your pocket once it comes back to your pocket the government will tell you we have to tax it except for the municipal and treasury you're lending your money to the government so they can't tax you on something that you did them the favor for basically. We move on to capital. Capital, it's basically how 
you're going to start everything. You're going to, you're going to, that's the amount of money that you save that will move everything. If is a مثلا that تبدأ شركة لازم أول حاجة تسويش نو to have capital you have to have money if you want to buy a house we look the first thing you need is a down payment a down payment is considered capital so it's a simple word but sometimes they just make it too hard for no reason what is diversification well I think I missed the word here which is portfolio Amro are you still here I think we're having connection issues with some people. Um, okay, I'll keep going. I'm sorry. Um, there's a word called portfolio. Now, if you're a photographer or someone who is into putting books together, that's a portfolio. So if you put things together, a group of uh, images, a group of folders, anything is called a portfolio. Well, it's the same thing with stocks. A group of stocks, a group of your investments put together is called a portfolio. So basically, you just open it and you look around. Okay, I have stock of this, that. I have this kind of bond, blah, 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 blah. That's what a portfolio simply is. No, no, you're good. Now, yeah, that, diverse. I don't know, just push it in, kid. I was just trying to see if there was people that can admit. If you ask me, waiting room, but it's still a penny. So where did we get to? You did the treasury so, bond, right? No, we're at diversification now. So you covered capital. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I explained what portfolio is, and I was uh, about to tell them that basically diversification is making sure that your portfolio or your collection of stocks and bonds and investments are done in a way that is that basically is a amount got earlier. It makes money. If it's a good day or a bad day, now it doesn't make sense in a yeah. You say if the say if the market is falling, you'd expect collapse. Everyone is gonna lose money. No, no. There are ways that you can preserve your money while the market is still falling. Now, before we get there, there's a few ter- terms command that we want to keep going through. And uh, then we'll take it from there. So I'm, I'd like you to tell me what an institutional investor is. An institutional investor is a is a company or a very large investor with um, backing from financial institutions. So let's say a asset manager, an investment bank, a hedge fund, a pension fund. Uh, a commodity trading house, a um, a, a family office, um, or even just um, just a, a or, or a small to medium, you know, like financial investment firm, which mm-hmm. which invests in in a, in a various different like kinds of uh, asset classes. That would be exactly. an institution, or you know, someone who's a big someone who has a lot of money, or they call you know in uh, Lehman's term a whale. Someone who has a trail, oh. like a black rock, who has like fire, so uh, you know, or someone like but, a, or a, or a Morgan Stanley or a JP who has about two point eight billion but, trillion. Sorry, go on. Do you remember the movie The Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah. So the guy Leonardo DiCaprio plays. Would you yeah, call that a, an institutional, he's an institutional investor? investor yeah. So basically, he's the guy that is sitting in an office with like a million other guys. Hello, 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 hello. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. That's the guy, right? Well, exactly. in old school terms. Exactly. It's basically like a big instant, a big play, a big company with a lot of money to play with, basically. Beautiful. Who has influence? That's an institution. Like, if that's an institution, then what is a retail investor? And let me tell you, this was funny Everyday to me person. because. When I was young, when I was learning about this, I really thought a retail investor is just someone who sells you smaller stocks and institutional sells you bigger stocks. That's what I really thought. But as I said, a retail investor is what? Hey, so it's everyday person, me, anybody. Your Haboba, your dad, someone who isn't like, you know, um, educated on financial, um, like our financial management or Financial Who doesn't services. have a bank, Mafi Bank guide, what else? 
يقول له اه يا يا تيك ماني تيك ماني ان انفست those are institutional اي واحد وراه بنك وراه ظهر كبير كده with billions of dollars that's what you call an institutional investor بس ريتو تمام عم قال is just us guys everyday people طيب now there are different types of investors other than this right i don't know okay beautiful now instead of going into different types of companies and and what types of investors like in school i want us to focus on small terms that we hear every day stuff like a bull investor a bear investor now i i still today i don't understand why they relate them to animals or what makes them think a bear is a calm animal but can you please tell them what a bull investor is please so a bull investor so when a bull attacks it kind of moves up doesn't it like with his horns it'll ram something so the idea is like basically a bull investor is someone who is the sent has the sentiment is bullish which means they believe the market is going to go up they believe that there's upside they believe that things are are going to just keep going up um someone who mm-hmm. believes someone who's just optimistic someone who has a positive view on the market positive outlook who has uh, good expectations of like the way things are going who expects high growth that's what no. i can say about an investor so the worst mm-hmm. part about it is that the arabic translation to it will be so bad then i kun al attor al mustasmir attor da which is just weird طيب دور تيست شوف اللي بيناسبك بس طيب البير انفستر who is a bear investor and why does that يعني if you already have someone who is aggressive like a bull why would you have someone like a bear what does a bear do bears attack down don't they they see danger they'll, they'll go down so they'll stand up and they'll try to like attack so the idea the idea of the, the bear is moving down So the market is falling so the bears are or have they have a bearish people or the bearish sentiment people believe the market's going to fall it's overinflated it's had too much of a run it's overvalued this this company is is the hunk of junk it's not worth 60 dollars it's worth 20 dollars so that's a bearish investor and they 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 don't have a good outlook on the market they think things have run too long and things are too expensive and things should be cheaper and things should correct and go down fall more into balance which is the bearish sentiment but exactly now But just overall, the market is always going to be one day it goes up one day it goes down so always it the bulls versus the bears is always a, a battle mm-hmm. going on and there's always but it's the not as but it's not as dramatic as people think it is exactly. yeah and if it, like now when people say bull investor bear investor yani yes we can give them these names but why do they have money invested does a bull invest money f- uh for him to say the market is going up or the bear does he مثلا invest money or betting money to say in يقول the market is going down do they do that yeah but they both use leverage to like uh over sensationalize their return so you know a bear a bull will use leverage to for the upside to exponentially mm-hmm. enhance their returns you know like uh few yeah, yeah. contract uh, or a call option yeah. or a warrant a call warrant for example and the bear investor would use uh, you know a put option or a future which is mm-hmm. on the downside um or he would use a put warrant yeah that's what we'll they get would get to do. these that's later different. but generally the term is just based on the sentiment yeah exactly so the investor believes the market will go up the bear investor so i uh Sorry? correct me if i'm wrong Am, but what you're trying to say is that both types of investors will use the tools al hajat the tools are given to them They'll in the market the tools or techniques exactly which we will go into the, in other sessions right no because they want to move the market to, exactly to boost their return or to over sensationalize mm-hmm. return so for example they will use uh, leverage and they will use various instruments which we'll go into on the upcoming topic uh, yeah we will keep on explaining what those so, are yeah. that's what they would do for example like where and that's where like you know it gets into you mm-hmm. know like example the tools and techniques 
Yeah, so, that's right, when right, it right, gets right. to the to the right, mr. Yeah, I mean. borrow to sell to then buy back cheap. That would be shorting. That that's the bear, the bearish side. Oh yeah, we will trust me. That we will explain to you guys in detail. Leno, it's not simple. It really yeah. isn't simple. But the metaphor of science, or you understand how it works. You can imagine, yani baraka, that you can imagine how much money you can make if you do the right research, if you understand it. Now, the first thing, when you go and look at a stock, what would you look at, Yam? Book value. So, okay, book value. So, hmm, okay, that sounds like a stupid word. Let's make it easier. What, what will book value mean? Means so, the price that you paid for it at the time. So let's say I bought a house 20 years ago for 10,000 pounds. The book value was 10,000 pounds. I can sell it. Let's say today the fair value or the market value today is worth 100,000 pounds. And regardless of what the market value is, the book value is what I bought it for. So the book value will always be the 10,000 pounds, what I bought it for initially. The initial cost is the book value. So you see where I'm highlighting here? The $20.12, that is the book value, which is the price you're buying the share for. Exactly. So it's sad that this is the company that they're giving me to look at because that's one of the companies I have my money invested in. But it is what it is. Now... Long term, so, um, out of the 42 years of work. Come on. <laughs> long term, exactly. See, now, the ask. Now, when you look at the book value, when you want to buy, let's say, you don't want to buy one share. You want to buy 1,000 shares, 20,000 shares. Each cent in the price change makes a difference. Yani, masalan, if you want to buy 1,000 shares for $2 or 1,000 shares for $2.02, it will matter. Now, the two cents, huh? it's a lot of money. But so this is where the ask and bid come in. And ask is the price that Anna, the one who is selling you the shares, will like, you know what? The minimum I can do is this. So I will look at the book value, which is the stock price. And I might add one cent to it to make money. On the other hand, and say, you know what? That's too much. I'll give you that that amount that you want plus 50 cents instead of one. Uh, sorry, 0.5 cents instead of one cent. So we meet halfway and that's where the book value is. I want this much. He wants that much. Exactly. Halfway book value. Um, <laughs> you know, can I share the soup? until we get to that amount now exactly one and all this like you do in sudan the metallic prices it's like that kind of concept as well that's exactly what it is and you mean in the middle that's the bid ask spread that's the the price but then the market is like every living thing in this world it has a balance um it has its philosophy yeah that applies to life it's very interesting once you start getting into it now one of the main things people yani they judge companies on which is the income slash revenue slash sales what is that income uh, or revenue is what they make from what they sell yani apple apple's revenue is 500 billion per year from what does it come? It comes from iPhones, iPads, um, iMacs, movies, whatever, blah, 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 yeah. until it gets to that point. Now, if, مثلاً, this year, Apple makes 500 billion. Next year, you're looking at all of their sales and you're looking at their numbers, and it looks like they won't make the 500 billion. What would happen to the Apple? What would you do or what would, people do in that regard they will think that apple is not as good just because they looked at the revenue and they judged the, by the last year so you already know that oh something happened here why are they selling less did they do something wrong 
had مثلا corona happened so now they can they can they can't make as much iPhones so that's why they're selling less there can be a million reasons but that's where the research comes in once you look at the income or the revenue of the company you start yani getting little details on what just happened this year or this quarter usually there's something yani the main one of the biggest seasons in finance is earning season Earnings season come four times a year, every three months. Every, every three months, exactly, every quarter. All companies have to, um, public companies, companies that are in the market that put their shares there of ownership to, to uh, generate capital, to make more money. All of them have to tell people how much they made. If they look at the book fully, I sold this amount, that amount, that their whole skeleton of the company has to be out there. Why? Lanu, it's a public company. You sold your shares to the public. Find now all these people, their owners, they have the right to see it. That's why it's a big deal. But then it makes a big difference in your stock price, in your future, everything, Yanni. Um, Go ahead. It's down to the sharika also to justify why it failed to reach targets, what happened, why there's a delay, what's going on. An example would be, I'm sure you guys are hearing about this ship shortage. So there's a delay in production of cars, electric vehicles, production, produ- delay in production of laptops, delay in production of cell phones, delay in production of TVs, smart TVs, because everything relies on a semiconductor chip. And um, this would have, like, for example, a catastrophic impact on the likes of an Apple or a, mm-hmm. or a, like a, Tesla. Or a Tesla or anything that needs to have a smart chip that, that mm-hmm. is able to give you that ability to be able to have that multifunctional purpose, to be able to just switch from a, a laptop to a, a smartphone to a TV to all of these things. All these rely on the semiconductor chip. And this is an example of, like, for example, something Your which would be different businesses. And which would, for example, be explained by a company saying, okay, this has happened, so this is going to impact us. This is what was going to happen. We expect it to impact us for this long. However, if you stay patient, buy more, believe in us. If we come back and we deliver, then we can give you dividends and special or bonus dividends on top of that, or bonus like, shares, which may have a good dividend. What is a dividend, yeah, and why do companies give dividends? First, I want you to explain, Yani, the, Yani, has see, Anna, I'm already giving you my money uh, in your, and to get shares back, صح? But for like a stock price, I'm already loaning you money from uh, bonds. طيب, I, and I'm making money back from these things. What is a dividend, yeah, what's the, what is this? A dividend is a payout from part of the uh, the the money left over from you know all the expenses from the sales and stuff uh, that the company can either choose to you know impl- invest in uh, you know further projects or or plants for example or expansion which you know they may have already done uh, which has been covered mm-hmm. in their expenses so it's the it's, really, it's the leftover money left from like all of their expenses and it's the gains that they have. So what they would tend to do is because you are taking on the risk and you're owning part of the company, the stock by equity, you have a right to dividends and you also have a right to vote. So it is your right to the shareholder to be given a dividend. The company isn't obliged to pay you the dividend. If times are hard and they can't afford to and they explain why, then they can cut dividends. Mm-hmm. However, the owning a stock, people tend to... In order for people to stock to own a stock or take the risk of investing in the company, this is your compensation for for taking on that risk. This is your rate of return. Mm-hmm. So, so, if that's a good tahaja, that is very interesting. The, you said, and correct me if I'm wrong. You said there are two types of companies: one that give dividends, one that don't give dividends, right? So basically, my company, Apple, again made five hundred billion dollars. قلنا شيلنا الجروش دي كلها دفعنا بيها الاكسبنسز دفعنا كل شيء the wages tax blah 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 we have a hundred million dollars left قاعد اساعد كده ما عارفين نعمل بيها شنو 
now that I'm Apple and one uh, share كبير وكذا I don't need to grow anymore what you're saying is بيشيلوا ال100 million بيشوفوا how many shares did they sell and they divide it by that صح that and also is مشنو like they don't have to give you that like for example a company which is a bit more which is like for example depending on how it classifies itself if it's for example a growth or technology company like let's say Amazon no, let's stick to Apple let's stick to let's stick, let's stick to, to a company that has already grown that is so Apple would would be Apple would compensate their shareholders by paying them a dividend so Apple mm. because of the money that they make and their sustainability and their maturity and their stability they would pay a dividend a company which is always seeking to grow and expand which is let's say it still doesn't feel like it's at the mature stage or some companies just generally don't pay mm. dividends which is all because they're always investing they're always expanding like a tesla like an amazon they wouldn't pay dividends okay perfect focus on tesla please why wouldn't tesla give dividends because they're tesla... consistently investing in new mm. things they're robot so... taxis for example now you're seeing that they've built an underground highway in vegas that allow you to bypass the traffic So you go, you hire like you go and you use their service. They put you in a Tesla. You go underground, and there's like little to no traffic there. You pass through miles of of of, of an underground uh, passageway to get to A to B for where you want to get to, and then you come out the other side of the tunnel and you're on and you're on land and and you bypass forty minutes to an hour of traffic just by using their service through the tunnel. So so, so, so there is a term for this. The term is capital reinvestment. Yeah, or capital expenditure, which is expenditure, which is called capex. Mm-hmm. Cap- that's uh, the amount that uh, a company is spending. So if a company is yeah. continuously spending on improvements and growth and new things, uh, then they, for example, wouldn't pay a dividend because they're always going to use that money to to expand or or acquire new businesses or help the company grow, grow new facilities. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and has to mention an Uber uh, a few years ago. لما كانوا بس في امريكا they were growing 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 then at some point they were like you know what let's go to england instead of giving people the dividend they take the money they made out بيمشوا they invested in getting uh مثلا starting commercials في uk اشتروا عربات في uk um anything that has to do with helping their company grow صح So that is the difference between giving dividends and not giving dividends. Exactly, Please. because the company doesn't want to have to spend the money to expand or to do something. They feel like we're good. Like we can just keep this money like for future investment so we can use this money to buy the stocks back or share buybacks, uh, which is also a form of, 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 of distributing the- capital to, to shareholders. So they will buy back the shares and they feel like they're cheap. That can also mm-hmm. the money that's left over can be used for that, or it can just be used just side, just leave it, and use it at a later date, unknown. No. Just leave right. it. To give you guys an example, a simple example, a company that pays dividend will be doing dividends like Habiba. Already, خلاص, you know, lived her life, did everything, and the gross yada of Jeba, ما بتعمل بمشنو. She says, you know what, yaki, where are my grandkids? تعال 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 يا ولد. Shield, 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 shield. That's a dividend. But a small company, someone like us, محتاجين الجروش to build our life. We're not. ما حنكون قاعدين بندي أي زول قدامنا جروسة. We're gonna be investing it in ourselves, investing it in our future, in the market. That's the same thing that companies do. For مثلاً a company that is old like General Electric كده ديل الحبوبات. ناس تسلا وكده ديل نحنا. That's basically if you wanna sim- put it like that. Now, عشان ما نمسك بهم زمن كتير نحن ما بقولينه كتير. But no, no, let's just touch up on these points. We've covered the income, uh, covered the dividend. We've already exactly covered the uh, return on capital because you've touched on that. You've touched on the return on equity, which is based on like how much you get on the equity deployed. So, for example, the idea of the pizza factory. Return on interest. Like, we touched. We touched on with the uh, with the bonds. For example, that's mm-hmm. how much you would get. For example, if it's a floating rate bond, which the bonds can carry, their interest rates are not fixed. That could be a return on interest, mm-hmm. where if the if their interest rates go up, then the bond, mm-hmm. the bond, the people who issued the bond, if they have the option, they can call the bonds, 
They can take the bonds back and reissue them at a lower interest rate. Basically, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, أنا I don't want to do this because أنا الريت اللي قاعد بدفعه لك كثير شديد والأيام دي أنا حالة تصلحت فأنا ما قلت أرجع أدفع لك كمية كده طيب أنا في تريك علمو في حاجة صغيرة علمونا لها في الجامعة عن موضوع ال return 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 أول ما تشوف كلمة return on something you focus on the word the last word يعني هنا capital return on capital means capital appreciation capital appreciation means إنه أنا خطيت عشرة دولار في الحتة دي في الشركة دي عشان تنمو نعم الشركة دي doubled its size it became twenty dollars that's return on capital return on equity is on uh, it's like if you're the company how much do you make back in the um, I don't know how to explain this one return the on return interest return from the actual money the company itself is invested equity in the company itself Mm. يعني مثلا your parent paid for your college دفعوا لي جامعتكم وكل شيء قام هسي تعرست وجبت اولاد هسي خلاص دارين حتى هم يقعدوا فيها زول يصرف عليهم that's you you're the return on هم the getting the return are on you the equity basically exactly but also the equity holder is the basically the owner, someone who owns money for example them issuing equity is them going out of their way to maybe get the money themselves their own means That's equity. Mm. Whatever you put in from your own money, that's your equity. So whatever return you make from your own actual money is return equity. For example, the amount of money that you've put into your own investments and you made back, for example, let's say you've, you reinvested profits and grown them and stuff, that's your return mm. on equity. Let's say you invested 200, but now you've got like 7,000 pounds. That would be like your return on equity because it's based on like mm. your own capital that you've made, generated yeah. over time and, and just reinvested. Exactly. Um, uh, volume, volume is simple but annoying. Volume is basically the amount of shares being traded on the day, which means, طبعا لما نقول uh, stock or equity or share, they're all the same thing. But لما نزوي يقول لك, okay, I'm gonna buy a stock in Apple. You don't buy one stock in Apple. One stock in Apple, محتاج لك حاجة. من أسي, I'm telling you right now. Don't buy one stock of anything and think it, that it will give you money back because that's not how it works. You need to buy, for for zaman before, yani before our time, for you to invest or just to start investing, they would tell you, you need a minimum of $30,000. Zaman, a logic can, innu, if you have $30,000, you can buy enough stocks of enough shares so that you can, yani, you can see the effect You know, is that and I have a thousand shares of Apple. Oh, app well, share price to Apple can me build up, but then it goes up to me, me a wahid. If you have a thousand shares, it uh, you're gonna gain a thousand dollars just by it moving one dollar. But is the end of one share and it goes up by one dollar, and you only have one dollar. So that is the whole point. You know, you need to own a lot. But what happens with the volume is that each company, let me call them billions of dollars or something like that, they have the shares that they issued, the shares that they bought for people are in the millions. There's no company that gives you 20 shares, 30 shares. There's usually 20 million, 30 million shares. I will show you a quick example of any of these companies. Let's say Zone Medica, which is... Oh, uh, I mean... Don't bully people. Um, طيب, here. So you see the bid. See, these are the things that we were talking about already. Bid. This is what they want to pay, want you to pay. Look at ask is low, uh sorry, what they want you. Sorry, this is what you want to pay, this is what you want to sell it for. Ain Aglabeshwaya. Um, a range with Alium that basically that's the lowest point the stock went to, and this is the highest point. Within the this year, is right? in a year, mm. It went from six yeah. cents to two dollars ninety as you can see. But crazy, exactly. Volume. Now, this is what you see here volume 78 million and eight eighty eight thousand six hundred twenty eight shares compared to the best, average. Compared to the average, now, why is it? 
why is the average more than the regular? This is not the shares outstanding. There's three things. There's one thing called shares outstanding, which is the total number of shares you have in the market. Which is your market capitalization. Exactly. That's what I wanted to get to. You know, that amount of shares, for the average volume is 113 million. The regular one will be probably, this is how you can find it also. This will be a fun thing to see. مثلا هنا أنا only see the average volume I see the volume بس أنا عايز أعرف how many shares عندهم في الماركت كامل فيقوم تقوم تت تت اه you take um, the share price uh, the market capitalization and I think what was it you divide it by the share price multiply by share price. yeah yeah you divide by share price so you take the uh, you, you divide it by nine four seven is that eight. nine four seven now yeah let me uh, nine four seven Eight one four zero 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 divided by what was it? One point one. What was the close? Uh, the close is one point one three. Yeah, so you have um literally like, yeah, eight hundred, yeah, eight hundred and thirty eight million shares out there, man. It's crazy. Eight hundred million shares. Eight hundred thirty eight yeah, I mean, average... million seven hundred seventy three thousand four hundred fifty one shares outstanding. So basically, يعني, out of the 800 million, only one, one eight. over eight, one eighth. Yani, I get them a rubber, uh, shares that are out there are being traded. Dela, al shares that were bought and sold today for one day. Yani, Lela bus, there were 113 million shares being bought and sold between people. Usually, al volume be kun hina, alihua 78 million. Oh, wait, I'm saying it the other way around. Sorry, 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 sorry. A little 78 million people traded shares. The average volume, sorry, on a regular day, between 113 million shares, I mean, for the market. Yeah, I mean, think about it, 113 million pairs of jeans are being sold back and forth, back and forth. Which is what makes the price go up and down, up and down. Every time someone sells, it goes down. Every time someone buys, it goes up a little bit. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, this is what Amr was saying earlier, is that the market is a pull and put. It's like a game of tug of war. One person will win or have a stronger hand. Time of the year, uh, the company, what they do, a million things. There's a million reasons for it. Um, but you, there's the types of markets. Now, I want if everyone gets the first two, I'm gonna be very happy today. Bull market and bear market. They are basically the same thing we said about investors, but you're saying it. Yeah, you know, you say how you go now the But has it generally on the market? Kulu, yani. When it's a recession, everything is falling, things are going bad. That's a bear market. Le, is declining. The first thing you see, declining market. Negative investor response. Negative investor response means people are selling, selling. They don't believe in their stocks anymore. They don't believe in these companies. Negative sentiment. It's... It comes usually, oh, oh, oops, easy. It comes in a weak economy, or it's a sign of a weak economy. Yeah, if you had the hustle of the economy, in 2008, why was that happening? We realized that loans loans There's so many people that it shut everything down. But the whole market started going into bear mode, basically. Oh, it showed that our economy is getting weaker. Uh, the stock price, Benzil, uh, people spend less. The idea that I like a lot about this. Less consumer spending is very, I mean, psychology, basically. Mm-hmm. 
اشتري هاي جيب جيب اشتري عايز تتعشى وين الليله؟ اوه لا لا انا عازمك والله ما تدفع اوه قوم القهوه اوه تعال بكره ليوم الفلس يجي وما يكون في شغل وات ار يو جونا دو؟ ما بس كده بيبول ار سيلينج ذير ستوكس بيكوز ذي ونا بوت ان سيف هيفن سو ذي ونا بوت ان كاش ذي ونا كيب از جروش ان ذير حساب بيكوز ذي فيل لايك ذا ماركت ار فالين اند ذير سكيرد ذي لوز اول ذير ماني اند اولسو ذي مايت جست بوت ذير ماني ان جولد ار بوت ذير ماني ان لايك an inflation asset which is a bitcoin or something just to try to hedge in like mm-hmm. the fall in the value of uh, cash yeah we'll get to hedging and all these things later when you uh like in other sessions for you guys yeah you guys, guys graduate bo- from from this session right this is, this is preschool <laughs> is it here today it's a road it's elementary school but, but what's fun about finance is if you understand this وتفتح اخبار the business news everything will make sense i really yeah. believe that Please watch, um, watch, watch Kramer's Mad Money. That's his entertainment. CNBC, Mad Money, Kramer. Um, you guys have any questions, by the way, in general, please, please ask. And I love helping people out with stuff like this. I really want to push more and more of our people to know, understand these things. Now, I know we took a lot of your time. There isn't much left. Um, <laughs> the bull market. Now, I'm going to tell you something earlier. The bear. hits you down it shoots you down a bull we see like a bit of fact but make food for what does a bull do the uh, what does a bull market do yeah yani everything is going well it's rising to the positive investor response yeah yani, and yani, people are buying shares euphoria things are going Aye. up oh i know sh- i know i know stock with apple i let all i keep and has to hashtag i shan it like عين البيتكوين طالع كيف بالضبط يعني هسه بيتكوين when it goes up and everyone puts their money في that's a bull market لما الناس تبدا تبيع that's a bear market ف so exactly. just keep it at that طيب there are few different types of markets to put your money in and i've seen this question a lot at the bottom so i'm happy that you guys asked this yeah there's many there's equity markets ال equity markets اللي هي بتاع shares stocks pure انا ببيع ستوكس باي ستوكس اه ان اند فيكسد انكم اور يو هير ذم ان ذا نو سينج فيكسد انكم فيكسد انكم ان ا سمبل واي از بيسيكلي بونز ان نو اتس لايك كانك بتاخذ في البيتشك بتاعك كل سنه حيدفع لك سبيسيفيك اماونت ذاتس واي اتس ان يور سالري جوز اب اتس ايبل لايك 2% اتس جست فيكسد Absolutely. You know, that 29,000 last year that becomes 30,000 this year, but it's still the same income, mm-hmm. same salary. It was out to just compensating you for inflation. That's so just to say, all right, Tesco, Walmart cost you 60 bucks last week to go get your shop. I know it's going to cost you 80, but here's an extra like 40 bucks a month. Kid, that's, that's what they were uh, doing. But then for foreign exchange market, foreign exchange is the market where يعني, we should all understand what foreign exchange is because that's the reason why the Sudanese pound is falling, the foreign exchange market. For the Sudanese is- market, literally for the foreign exchange market, it's the bull, as long as bull market ever, it goes up all the time. You just uh, own like well, dollars it, or... It, it depends you just on own dollars size. when it was two to one, like 12 years ago, you're good. You just just left I'm, it. Yeah, see, looking at the Geneva Sudani, From which side, who will be the bull? In Geneva, Sudan. Yani, you see, Geneva got to the dollar. Who is the bull in this situation? Who is the bear? The bull is the um, is the U.S. dollar. Is the bull? The bear is the Sudanese uh, Geneva, Sudan. Thank you, sir. I love that answer. Let me know. Yani, you hit it right in the nail with the Sudan uh, with uh, saying that the dollar is bu- is a bull. Thank you for that. Play. Um, what are what are commodities? We should understand the commodities market more than any person in the world. The commodity market can be, for example, actual asset, like actual like like things which can be used in uh, manufacturing or producing. Uh, what do we produce in Sudan? Something which can be stored as well uh, and, 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 and maintained and taken care of. For example. Livestock Sudan. is a commodity. So, you know, the, 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 the meat that we have within various regions of Sudan, cattle, that's, that's a commodity. Uh, uh, sesame oil is a commodity. 
oil. Um, salt well, is a commodity. Mean, sugar is a commodity. Um, gold, silver. Gold. Even orange juice now is a commodity. You can buy contracts mm. for orange juice now. Uh, so basically, anything is a commodity, basically. Like, for example, there's hard commodities and there's soft commodities. Hard commodity mm -hmm. would be like a metal or uh, a, a form of metal. A soft commodity would be like a livestock, like, you know, such Coffee, as you have food. Food, such as pork bellies, which, you know, you get bacon from. That's like a, a popular commodity traded on the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, for example. Coffee, exactly. Sugar, wheat, flour. Um, mm -hmm. Fruits would be your soft commodities. Exactly. Oil would be a hard commodity, for example. Now, the whole thing about the market is the pull and push, demand, supply, the two teams, you know, the buy and sell. Exactly. Now, fill forex, fixed income, equity, fee, everything. This applies in all of this. It's always one versus the other. One is pulling, one is uh, pulling from the other side. So with commodities, it's the same thing. Yeah, but I want to think to imagine it in a bigger way. Oh, I have two terms for those for commodities. So when the market's going up, so for example, the, the future price is, is going to be higher than the commodity market is in a contango. And if it's going to be lower, right now the market now is higher than it what it's anticipated to be in the future, then we're in a backwardation. That, they, that, that, uh, we went too deep with that one. No, no, these are the technical terms. I'm just saying hmm. when the market, right, for example, to, like that, to, like what? To break it down in a play balance, I want you to explain it to me from this angle. Masalan, uh, Brazil produces coffee, right? Yeah. Largest producer in the world, Masalan. And one year, Masalan, last year they had the Amazon fire. Yeah. So they lost half of their crop of coffee. Most of the people who are in the world, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for the price of coffee for the market that commodities. It's gonna rally. It's gonna skyrocket. Too much uh, Why? demand, little supply. Beautiful, beautiful. Type. If Brazil got the sun up bad, or got it, so I'm gonna award you on the sun of the year. Instead of selling you a hundred, I'm selling you a hundred and fifty. What would happen to the price of gold, uh, of um, uh, coffee? It would fall. So the demand would still be the same. The supply would increase, so the price would fall. So gracias. in the former situation, you would have the contango because the price is going to be higher than the, because of what happened. Whereas the former situation would be a backwardation because right now you're going to sell it for more expensive, but because of the event happening where it's mm -hmm. going to be cheaper because you can have more, that's the backwardation. So the idea of right now it costs more than it would in the future versus right now it costs less versus it would, the more it will cost in the future. Exactly. Um, we all know what the real estate market is, more or less. Uh, well, I don't think we need to really stay on it. I want to focus on crypto more than anything. OTC is, there's two types that I see a lot. OTC is like over-the-counter drugs, but they're over-the-counter co companies. And <laughs> um, most of the OTC are penny stocks, or what they call penny stocks. Penny stocks are, I would say, anything under $5. Or two dollars. Not necessarily based on the, the cost. It's based on the market capitalization. Of the so it company. could be um it could be like something that's like, for example, uh lake resources is, is a penny stock, like, is it an OTC, for example. What what is a market capitalization now? Market capitalization is the value of the company, which is as we did before, the number of shares times by the price of the company. So if you've got like yes. exactly. That would be a, like Zomedic would be a penny stock. Mm -hmm. Look at their price. I mean, look at this. Look it's at pennies, this. Peanuts, mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. Usually, how you can also tell what is a penny stock company is when they have an, an crazy amount of shares. Being and look, sold. it says they're overvalued. Can't just shift. Overvalued. Exactly. Everyone's telling you sell it, sell it, sell it because no one wants it. In the short term, Everyone's telling you they're not going to do good. In the long term, they're going to do better. For example, if you're an investor that thinks and I am growth in six months, look at what's going to happen. So don't invest here. But if you want to invest for 10 years, maybe it is a good thing. You know, yeah. what happens with these companies is that Bikunu, they want to do something. They have a drug they want to research. 
they have a new product that they want to push for or something, but they keep just pushing shares for the market. They sell, 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 so that they can have the money in their pocket to do this research. But then when they're ready to, uh, to become a big company, they start buying back their shares from people to basically make the market, uh, the shares in those markets less and less. Crypto is Bitcoin, alternative coins. There is hundreds and thousands of them. They are not a simple thing to explain. And uh, from my side, I would rather just do a whole or half a session on them while I do my research as well. But I'm if you want to give a couple of words on it, I, uh, feel free. I am I, <laughs> I'm good. So a crypto is a decentralized um, currency, uh, which is uh, or exchange where you have the blockchain, which is the infrastructure, the network, which where this, the transactions are stored. For example, with Bitcoin, why it's so amazing, why it's so secure is because with Bitcoin, from the very first Bitcoin issued, from the very first transaction, you can actually trace back in the blockchain technology wh where the first Bitcoin was issued, what transactions have happened recently within Bitcoin from the transfer of money to the transfer of ownership, all that's in the blockchain. The blockchain cannot be changed. It cannot be penetrated. It cannot be mm. manipulated. As opposed to me right now, let's say banking with RBS, uh, someone here could give me a prank call and I get scared and I, and I give them, I get my card reader out and I call them and stuff. And they're like, yeah, call into the system, change everything, all right? And I go in, I log into my bank account one day, my money's gone. I have a loan issue that I don't even have the money for like 10,000 pounds for home repairs because that's able to be infiltrated. It's able to be hacked with Bitcoin and, you know, Ethereum or Cardano um, or, you know, Bitcoin Cash or these you kinds of things. You cannot change those transactions. Change it, exactly. And they all have different blockchains. So the blockchain network of Bitcoin is its own thing, Bitcoin. And you have Ethereum, which has its own blockchain. And you have blockchains on Tron, which have their own projects like EOS and 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 and, and BitTorrent. You know, we used to do torrents uh, back in the day. And the idea yeah. of the, it's all de yeah. dep depends on the infrastructure of like the people who download and idea mm -hmm. of like, you no, know, you used to do they call seeding. But you would help people like support their download. You earn like like BitTorrent tokens right. from that. And then you would also have yeah. um uh, like, you know, for example, Cardano, which is built off the infrastructure or the blockchain of Ethereum, which is basically trying to take the best characteristics, best of both worlds in Ethereum and, and improve yeah, it, yeah. Enhance it and create its own yeah. thing, which is why it's just a popular coin. And then you have Doge, which, which also is on its own, like, thing, which is... Mm. The thing is hype, with... But, you know, each their own and vice versa yeah. with Ripple or XRP, its own blockchain. The thing is... Thing. Yeah. The thing is with blockchain and alternative I coins. Can, I can be here till Kelsey move. Exactly. Exactly. Like we can sit here and explain it. By the time we're finished explaining it, this will be sour. That's that's how long it is. Right. Uh, it's very complicated, uh, but it's made to make our life better. Oh, if you guys would like a whole session on it, we would love to do that. I love explaining blockchains and how they work, but you know, it's too complicated to explain in two words. <laughs> now, these are the main sectors that are in a, in a market. Yani, any company you can think of, Firasco, main Instagram to British Petroleum to Amazon, they're in one of these lists, if not two of them. Amazon yes. Energy, oil companies, gas, electric, tiny fish, um, green energy, high density materials are aren't those commodities and people yeah. Yeah, I mean, and mining companies become the materials, sir. Oh, the kind of industrials. Materials and, are the actual uh, commodity itself. So like the actual like metal or whatever, those would be the materials. Or for example, mm -hmm. like the people who extract the materials. The industrials are the ones who 
So a yeah, mining you're right. Company, the mining companies with materials, right? The industrials would be the ones who use it for like manufacturing, like cars. We use the steel. Or general right? motors. Exactly. They'd be industrials, right? And then okay. your consumer discretionary would be like uh, a Unilever or a Estee Lauder or a L'Oreal or or Adidas or Nike. These kind of things, which are where they're very <laughs> diversified. They tailor That's to it. the consumer, but they can basically build your whole life. Yeah, unless you need a lever, your lever has 100 companies under them. For, exactly. You can buy soap, you can buy food, you can buy cars, insurance, a house, you can do a lot. Same as Cons- Pepsi now, who've announced they're going to make like these keto chips, but you can like, mm-hmm. if you buy like keto potato chips, which helps you lose weight, and they're actually nine grams of protein per pack. Like the guy, of the CFO was announcing it today on CNBC. And they've already mm-hmm. got like Quaker Oats and Gatorade and PepsiCo, and they have like other things that they're doing, like Lipton, for example, is their thing. And they just have it's a, a very diversified business. But as you said, like they could fall into many things. Exactly. Consumer staples. Sure. Consumer staples, so someone like Amazon. Those would be Tesla. things such as like things. Sorry? Tesla, Amazon, where you're not just. No, yeah, you can argue they're discretionary, yeah. though. Staples would be something used, like for example, like your tires, or mm. let's say like something for like your your toilet, like uh, true, 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 true. Uh, or toilet something paper. for what I can um, mom, That's the super yeah, staple. that's a discretion, exactly. That's a exactly that's a staple, or uh, let's say like um, TV stands is a, is a staple and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and the IKEA, the IKEA, consumer exactly. Staple. Those are consumer staples. Healthcare. Those as well are count, considered as non-cyclical, so. Any time of the year, there is no mm. hot season for them. They're always going to be there. There's always going to be a, a demand for them. Healthcare. Right. Healthcare is, you know, all the pharmaceutical companies, now Pfizer, the hospitals, the companies that own hospitals. Um, like United MSA, Health. United Health, the insurance companies, they call them healthcare. Yeah. Financials are your banks, your... Um, asset that's managers, it. your pension funds. Exactly. Your, Beautiful. So you, your IT, Del Mino. They're like anything from cloud services to a company which just offers services, like you know, consumer services digitally. It doesn't really offer something physical. For example, let's say Google. Instagram is an IT. Instagram is an IT owned by Facebook, which is which is an information technology. Uh, you know what's not. funny? That was a trick question. Because Instagram, social media companies, it's a trick thing. Social media companies go into both information technology and telecommunication. Yeah. Because of Messenger and Facebook Messenger made Facebook go into two sectors instead of one. You know, that's that's the fun part about finding these things out. Yeah, and uh, then you can argue something like in Seagull or American uh, Tower corporation that's the telecom service because they make mm-hmm. the 5g networks that's american eagle the one that's so close no american tower also... american tower no. no no i'm telling you about american eagle it's they'll a company dis- that sells they'll clothing discretionary, though. they'll be this they're consumer discretionary because they sell clothes but now they do cloud services so now they're also it so a clothing company can also be in it it's not yani ma lo inta fi wahed it's not يعني, it's not exclusive you can jump around between two or three different uh, sectors example with Apple and the Apple watch and the Apple healthcare so now yeah, the Apple, watch, all, okay, Apple is IT and consumer discretionary and telecom and healthcare, uh, healthcare and telecom exactly Beautiful. And if they do cars, and they'll be an industrial as well. So you have to look at it on the four sectors and look at it, the different sectors of that business and analyze it that way. Mm-hmm. You can't just look Utilities. at it on one moving part. You have to. No. Um, Dominion Energy. Any zol shifta SSE. Shirkta kahraba al bikta alikum al kahraba tnaash al saat al yom dela dal utilities zato. Yeah, or the American Dominion Energy, or we have here EDF, or mm-hmm. you know we have SSE British Gas, which is you know Centrica, 
and you have like many other like offer choices which, which give you energy and provider there they would count as that like the whole energy like a uh, basic services that or you know like uh, yeah they offer you water and electricity like there you go. Yeah. real estate is the real estate market taban buildings housing everything now the uh, sectors there if you see just how many sectors there are imagine how many companies there are so when you look at the market and you want to invest in the Tugrush Kamshirka just imagine how many companies there are if i never 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 listen to someone who tells you oh buy this and you go and buy it tawali because now you can see how many companies there are and how many ways you can just to identify what you want to see and what you want you can yeah and has see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 sectors 11 sectors imagine each sector has a thousand company that's how many companies you have that you can invest in for your opportunities are just amazing but by then there's something that I'm keep telling me that I love in no if i invest and the bank invests and my dad invests and my cousin invests it's not a competition it's not that one person will win we can all win because there's so much but the problem is is that we don't understand it from issue from the culture from we stay away for nas that make money make more of it because they're alone that's exactly. the only difference scared money don't make money as chris sain says and mm-hmm. like at the end of the day like you know what i mean you can see these things you can get scared but at the end of the day the money that's in your bank account is going to get taken by the bank and they're going to put it into the market and they're going to play with it and they're going to lend it out and they're going to do their thing with it they're going to make if money you're gonna, if you're not going to use it they're going to use it you know exactly exactly now these are just some fun misconceptions that we found about the market some of them are being said to us by people on a regular basis especially in number 1 so we just want to give you a couple of words on each and just tell you why it's not true awal wahda putting your money in the market is like putting your money in a casino you're gambling and yani your money gumar <laughs> gumar bas now that is not true let me tell you why lanu in gumar you're betting your luck against something against the odds yani مثلاً, في 52 boxes انت لازم تختار واحد that could win فانت you're working against the odds لانه it's يعني ما في صالحك بس هنا it's not like that هنا you make um intuitive decisions or guesses intuitive guesses because of certain information that you've been given fa in yani data plus data plus data equals your decision fil casino ma fi data fil casino shil warmi bas you don't think about it that's the whole point of a casino it's the rush in the market it's not like that it's actually it moves a lot slower than you think in no بتشوفها شركة اوكي okay. growing 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 الليلة كانت 9 دولار بكرة 9 و 10 بعد بكرة 9 و 30 cents 9.40 بعد ذاك 2 days later ترجع 9.20 ما يعني خلاص الماركت وقع والدنيا انتهت no it just goes back up again there is it's like a living thing it goes up it goes down it goes up just like your mood just like your life just like everything exactly uh, it's just like you have to be able mm-hmm. to If you believe in something long term you have to be able to weather the storm you have to remember that you know long term markets are always bullish and that at the end of the day like you know like you only really lose when you sell and also mm-hmm. you have to remember that the markets aren't efficient so just because you see something is priced at this price it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually worth that much it could be worth a lot more but if you think oh you know they're doing this they're doing it like you know like back in the day when i saw ge was at like Three bucks, like this is too cheap. Larry Cops come in, he's changing this company. He's gonna filter out the noise, get rid of the garbage, and just get the business company back to basics. And now it's like worth like fourteen dollars. That's an example mm-hmm. of like you know, there's a hidden value in a company. But it's down to you to do your research, to sit there and look at the company, go on their investor relations website, uh, section their website, read up mm-hmm. on what the company's doing, what they're planning, you know. 
watch, uh, you know, just check out, you go on YouTube and see what the, the company CEO is saying or what he or she is saying, like what their plans are and what they're doing yeah. to implement these plans. You know, if you I think mean, there's something there, visit it. Look at the look at the company. Think if there's something there. You think there's an opportunity there? Go for it. You know. Why not? Right now, yeah, there's so exactly. many friends to catch. You know, electric market exactly. vehicles, cryptocurrencies. Um, you know, working from home. This is now going to be seen as a permanent thing. Uh, yeah, and has so a basic things. example. Yeah. If you bought Tesla when it started, it was for five dollars. You know that. And what did Kramer Sorry. say? Get in and get out on the first day. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I mean, but then you can see the price. It goes up to six, man, five, eight, five, seven, four. It goes down. Yeah, okay, I'm scared. But no, you start going back up again. But look at what happens over time. This is 10, 10 years ago. Look, $5. Look at what happens over time. In one year, it just went up by $1. In two years, it went up by another dollar. In three years, it went up by like $31. A few months later, it goes down. But then it goes back up, back up, back up. Look at the numbers changing. Look at how fast the open price. Bear in mind, a lot of that was driven by SSC controversy. Mm -hmm. And this is in their, some of their bad days, come on, not all their good days. But you're still up if you bought those time that years ago. If you bought a five bucks, you're still up regardless. It Mm -hmm. makes no difference. Yeah, imagine you bought 100 shares for five bucks. That's $500. Now it's at 58. Multiply 58 by 100. Exactly. That's now it's worth $800. Exactly. Now it's, now it's worth uh, what, $760 no, it's worth, it's worth. $60 today? 738 738 So and imagine. Yeah, that's and that's still what amazing. happens with time. Yeah, exactly. It's all about time. Being patient. Yeah, I mean, everything is patience, read, understand, read some more. The best people that make do things, out. they just keep their mind fresh. They read a lot. They understand things that they never did before. Now, look at the analysts. They tell you short term, yeah, it's going to make money. Midterm, you might lose a little bit, but in the long term, you're going to go back. Yeah, price target was raised to $1,049 a share by one of the analysts. Like mm-hmm. you just literally like the, if you also understand what you're buying, that's why we say buying the stock is buying part of a business. Tesla, what they do, why, 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 like I would invest in Tesla would be because of the data mining that they do, the data that they process and gather, and also what the data is used for. The fact that they can use it to be, build an autonomous taxi service, the fact that they can use it to be ahead in the technology in terms of the electric vehicles. In terms mm-hmm. of being the leader, in terms of the batteries See? that they have, which is unique to them, no one else has. The fact That's that they also beautiful. have the there are seventy eight percent of the sales of EVs in the in the market for the past like what five ten years. So like you know Ford and GM are just going to come in overnight and be like yeah we're just going to take the hell now, right? But and it also, also justifies <laughs> it also justifies why their price is like this right now. Exactly. Yeah, I know you just gave like you just gave everyone a basic like three or four nuggets of what Tesla is planning to do in the future. Yeah, and you know, listen, I'm going to the details. That's research. Amr did his research. Gotta, he yeah. got addicted to the company or to the news so that he knows what's going to happen in the future. But all this information is public. You, you just have to look for it. I remember now, this guy, the CEO, Elon Musk, is trying to change the world for a better. He's trying to make it cleaner. Renewable energies, you know. Imagine never having to pay for gas again. Imagine be people in Sudan. Imagine never having to go to a soft and see a queue for petrol instead of having to go to that random guy with the jerikana. I was saying, I like jalon bit nine million, or that we could like jalon bit million. Imagine never having to do that again. Just to plug in your car, go somewhere you can plug in your car. Have to have that headache of yeah, nine, ten, eleven sense. hours a day of your life yeah. in a queue. So that's yeah. what this guy's doing. You, babe, the second one, you need a lot of money to start investing. No, you don't. False. Um, the easily, you just zil hasala. Every time you put more and more money and keep investing, that's how you grow it. And I'm yeah. noticing that we went almost two hours, so we wanna um, let's answer a few questions. Like I feel bad that we haven't answered any. 
Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll quickly finish these points and then we'll just leave it as a QA and a open. Okay. So past performances guarantees future returns. What, is, what this oh. says is basically that because Tesla did this, that means halas, 100% is going to go up and up and up. That's not true. It never is true. Whatever it did in the past is something. What it does in the future is something else. A quick example is a coin flip. If you flip a coin, it's 50-50, either heads or tails. If you flip the coin five times and you get five times the same thing, when you flip it the sixth time, will it go to the other side? No, it will still be a 50-50 chance. Oh, yeah. Or even and... if you look at the price chart with that Sony, Sony did this, and then it took like 10 years for it to get back to that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like that, Gen that, there was no guarantee. Look at GE. GE was the most valuable company in the world for most of our bucks. lives. 60 uh, bucks. People said we could retire on GE forever. So 20 something dollars. This is when 26, 2006. But then look what happens. This is the most valuable company in the world for like 10, 20 years. And look at how they did. So if you judge GE by their past performance and say, oh, halas, they're going to make money. They're going to make money. Let me show you. Look at this. Look at that. There were 60 bucks at one point. See how high they fell? Imagine you bought your stock at the top point and said, yeah, yeah, it'll go more up. What would happen to you then? Fall in life. <laughs> Lose all your money. And that's where past performance does not guarantee future returns. Does not. Never. Um, a retirement account, a 401k, or I know every country has this different way of naming it, is the only way to invest in your future. False. If you heard anything today, you know it's false. <laughs> Investing in an individual stock is the best way. False. No. You know why? Because your risk is on 100%. Exactly. That it's like saying, I'm going to put all my money in Bitcoin and it's up 60,000 and it's back to 50,000. It's a roller coaster, man. You don't need that. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to, as we said earlier, diversify. Buy some of this, some of that, some of this, some of that. Ashan, everyone can balance each other out. Exactly. Then over time, as your capital grows, the number of shares and different stocks you can have, the more mm -hmm. balanced it is, and then the more like set you are in terms of capital growth and returns. I think we'll conclude it there. Let's just let's 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 take the uh, Q and A's down. Okay. So all over the internet, different ads come up for investment opportunities. What is the best way to know what is right and what is not? Okay. So first thing first, if anyone is putting a commercial for you to invest in their company, don't do it. Exactly. Or a person. Never listen to anyone that tells you, I know how to, I'll teach you how to, all these investment gurus and all those people, do not listen to them. Please, please, please save yourself money and your heart uh, aches and your, what is, oh, there we go. Please do not, any investment guru that tells you, pay me money so you can make money, nah, they're lying to you. I'm telling you right now, they're lying to you. I mean, Forex between me and Al, yeah, go on, go on, go on. we were talking about YouTube gurus the other day. Al. How many people did we go through to say, okay, you know what? We agree on two people that maybe we would like to listen to them and filter out the rest. Yeah, but even the, like, at least the good thing about, like, for example, even people who, like, who, are, who are gurus, as long as they're transparent, as long as they show you on the down days what's going on and on the good days what's going on and they let you know like, yeah, like the way the market is going and they're consistent. And yeah, you can listen to them and just get an opinion, but never take it always with a grain of salt. Doesn't mean what they're saying is going to happen or come true. Yeah. If they talk about something, go do the research after that you hear them talk. Don't They'll go always say straight. we're not financial advisors. It's not financial advice. Da, 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 da. Protect themselves mm -hmm. so you guys don't come and sue them later on with a lawsuit. Absolutely, exactly. So M. Eid said, is investing in Forex a good investment? I wouldn't do it. I would run away from Forex. Exactly. I don't want to come to you and those will advert be like, yo, Forex, we are gurus. Nah, bro. Mm -mm. 
even mm-hmm. if there's money, it's like literally like day trading, like one, two percent. It's nothing, bro. You have to put a lot to make a little. And there's exactly. no there's no security, there's volatility. If you want volatility and you want more success returns, go get yourself a crypto, man. Nah, man it's nah, better man. than this doing forex. Forex. This is a financial also- advice, by the way, but for me, no. Nah. Forex is it. Nah, no, I wouldn't no, do it. No. You're a call, for- man. You want to put that risk? You want to do it? Like, by all means, for me, it's a no-go, man. Never. Please don't. Please. Even, I you buy, you e- don't even do if it. you buy equities and they're international, you still have exposure to foreign exchange risk anyway. Mm-hmm. Don't do foreign exchange. First of all, you need to understand countries. You need to understand GDPs. You need to understand international relations. You need to be political able to predict risk. the future. You need to exactly political risk. The economy. Uh, There's so much to risk. it. There's so Too many much. things. Yeah. It, no. What sector is the safest to invest? There is no safest sector. Well, honestly, like it's all relative, sir. So I would say there's a safest on. sector. I would say there's a safest, safest companies. So you look at the companies which are even in down days or like down times, they're still doing their thing. So and you don't look at companies that are big, that mm. are established, uh, that are doing their thing regardless, and that are just consistent. You know what yeah. I mean? Examples Apple, of that would be like your Unilever, your Procter and Gamble's, your Costco's. Stuff like that that goes up like two or three percent a year. A Coca Cola, Pepsi, these kind of mm. things. These are your safe things. Just like if or an Apple. That's if I'm scared and I don't want to lose. These are the kind of companies you go for. Yeah, the thing is with safe investments or safest companies. Those are more to do one of two things. Either you park your money there, and it doesn't lose its value, or you do it for dividends. Because safe companies usually are fully developed and fully grown. They don't, they're not really here to, for their share price to go up and everything. So in the end, it all depends on how much, how, like what's your investment risk? Uh, tolerance. Tolerance, exactly. Do you want to invest a lot of money in risky stuff that maybe today you lose it, maybe tomorrow you don't? Or do you want to go, you know what? I want my money to grow by 5% per year and I just want to sit there. So it depends. You have to understand what you want. You have to discuss it with yourself and with, with everyone around you. See how much you make, how much you can save per week or per month. This is not a yeah. one-time investment. This is a consistent in- you want to investment. Be consistent. Exactly. And there's platforms you can use to use like to buy fractions, a like Charles mm-hmm. Schwab, TVI Ameritrade, uh, Robinhood, Webull, stuff like that. You got in the States. Here in the UK, you got Plus 500, Trading 212, eToro. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually, sure there is a question like towards that. that. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry, I want to go back to this one from Shiza uh, mm-hmm. about the bonds. Of course, it is Riva because it's just straight up interest that you're dealing with. Uh, my oh, we still invest. didn't get to that question. Which one? Sorry. Two, we still have two more before it. I'm sorry. So anyway, we within have, the sector, we have the there's an investor, the beginning, inv- the beginner investor, where do you think you should start? Um, probably index funds, I would say. What do you think? Like ETFs? Index funds or paper trading? No, no, so not index funds. Sorry, I mean, I'd say ETFs. ETFs are a place to start. Unit ETFs trust. Or, or paper trading. So ETFs, ETFs are interesting. What ETFs they do so is, unit trusts, like stuff like that. Like that's like, mm-hmm. like more, that's safe because you've got about 50 to 100 shares just bundled together. So even if one share gets slapped, it doesn't really affect the others. And it won't so like, oh. yeah, an ETF is, uh, is basically, um, should we do an index fund that's one is better? Well, I mean, eh. like yeah, an ETF, is a, an ETF can be an index fund. An ETF can be mm-hmm. used like an S&P ETF, for example. Yeah, like a so there's tier. some, exactly. So we have something in the market that you will always hear called the S&P 500. S&P is a company called Standard & Poor's. They made an ETF, which is a collection, a basket of these companies, stocks of companies. It's of the called top, an index, yeah. They made an index. Sorry, the index, sorry. Of the top 500 companies in America. Exactly. For, I yani, if yeah, Tesla was only introduced or put into that 
into that 500 list uh, at the beginning of the year. Until then, they weren't the top 500 or they weren't considered the top 500 companies in the world. So this ETF or this index fund, what you do is you buy it just like a stock. You just put your money there. And the beauty of it is that more or less on an average of 10, uh, on an average of 10 years, it returns around 15%. So every year you get like 15% of your money back. So think about it this way. The more you put in, the more you get back. Yeah, and there's, there's some good ETFs out there, Vanguard, Valley Gifford, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 they're about, you know. They're, they're, and they're all depends. Right. And, there, and, you can like choose, and you can choose the ones you want for sector. You can choose one for semiconductors. You can get one for clean energy. You can get mm-hmm. one for an all-world exposure or an ESG one, which just focuses on like companies which are socially, mm-hmm. environmentally, and, and governance, like conscious and responsible. That could work, mm-hmm. you know, especially now. That's, like the thing. that's how you, that's also a factor when you actually look at a company as well. Are they trying to improve the world and make sure. a make the world better true now see this is i love i love these two questions from uh where where, oh post not where did it go oh there we go uh from mish and and uh we didn't answer the other one from shiza yeah that's the those are the ones i was gonna tell you about mission shiza they're the same question when it comes to capital appreciation versus uh interest now interest Riba, straight up. There is no, t- and exactly. it, it's black and white. It's riba. Yes, absolutely. That's why we don't do bonds. But in the there Islamic is Islamic world, bonds, sukuks. So even cool. they kind of suck, man. They would give you like, like hardly, and even then they're kind of like trying to halalify it by like doing some mumbo mm-hmm. jumbo and tweaking things the, out. But the thing is with bonds in the Arab world or sukuk in itself is that. If a bond and the money you make from it all depends on how much you trust that government or how much that government is trusted to pay you back. Exactly. But the more trusted, the less they pay you. The less trusted, the more they pay you because you're taking exactly. more risk. But in Arab countries and stuff like that, sometimes... There's some low yields, man. Saudi would be low But that's yield. what I'm you saying. Would be a low yield. No, because it's Oman a would be a low yield. Because it's a religious thing, they will always be loyal. They will never go up. And that's where the issue is. You don't really, like, I don't know. It's just for me right now, at this time of time and day, it's not worth it. Once you start, once the world starts getting better and you have inflation and interest prices are changing and going up, that's when it makes sense. Now it's not. Yeah, but even then, like, your value of the bond goes to, goes to nothing because... The interest rates are going up, so the bond becomes less, becomes more worthless. What's the point? The overvalued, in my opinion. I, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. It's not financial advice, but each to their own. I don't judge you. You know, Allah is the judge, but I personally mm-hmm. don't play with bonds or entertain fixed income. Absolutely. Clear. I, Abdullah Salah said a very good thing. Ethiopian Renaissance Dam partly was funded through treasury bonds. That's true. Exactly. Sudan, most of country. Sudan is living off like debt from the previous regime now, man. They're suffering, so there you go. Mm-hmm. And the okay. money was there, it's taken up, put in pockets. It's like, you can sort that out for us. Even what exactly. they with the IMF do when they help out countries, that's debt. That's that's issue. That's them debt. issuing debt to support because they want a part of the, the change, mm-hmm. you know. Like, They'll buy your your bonds, your country's bonds, basically, and give them the money through that. Then I'm okay, but do clear cash, sorry. Now, as a starting investor, is it better to invest in companies that give you dividend or growing companies? Can you make this recording available to us and your contracts if possible for future queries? We have Tarawi here now. Of course, yeah, would love to. It's being yeah, recorded. Just, um, I would say, I would say mix the two combination of mm-hmm. growth and dividend. So that way yep. you've got your uh, you've got your stable income coming in, and you can put on like the drip option, which is a uh, dividend reinvestment plan. Just reinvest mm-hmm. your dividends back into the stock, and then, or if you want to just keep it as cash, and then you can have some growth companies which have like a long way to run, which which are doing great things. Uh, that would be an uh, example. But then one thing though, before you even look into what company you want to invest in, I would like you to figure out what your investment strategy is. What exactly. do you want to get out of it? 
انت دو يو ونا بيلد دو يو ونا ريتش ا بليون دولارز ولا مثلا دو يو ونا باي فور كولج دو يو هاف كيدز مثلا ذات يو ونت تو سيف فور ذير فيوتشر ذيرز ا مليون ثينجز ذات يو كان بي سيفين فور بت يو هاف تو نو وات يو ونت فذن ات ويل تيل يو اصلا ات ويل كايند اوف انسر ذات كويشن فور يو بيكوز If you now just want to save up your money for the future and you say, I want to have a billion dollars at one time, I would say just go straight growing companies because they come in cheaper and they're, they can appreciate at a very fast pace. Yeah, um, ch- check out ARK. ARK Invest. ARK they have Invest. some great growth companies they look at and they buy mm-hmm. in, you know, like see what they're doing. But remember, they invest over the five years. So you, well, you might buy, you might get slapped right now, but a short term, but long term, you, you know, it might do its thing, but we can't mm-hmm. really give that advice. That's just down to them to give you their, their take exactly. and their opinion. You can look on their webinars, on their website, their justification, and they have research you can read as well. Once you, once you figure out what your investment strategy is, it will tell you a lot, exactly. a lot about you. I see what you had saying, do you have any, recommend any OTC investments? Uh, uh, there was one right before it. Is there a specific time or a prime uh, or a prime to do stock exchange AM PM? Yeah, I mean each market each market is different, so mm. it's down to you to you know to choose the market that you want. So if I want to buy Alibaba, I can either buy the buy it according to U.S. time, and I can buy the ADR, which is the American Depository Receipt, or I can buy the actual Chinese stock. which you know, is available through interactive brokers and you can do it that way. And then But you, you have, have to do it in China time. No, not necessarily. You can put the market order through and then because oh. interactive brokers are, 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 are obliged to do the best execution policy. So when the market opens, they look at the price throughout the day and they give you a price. So usually the mid price between the high and low is what they yeah, would tend to do. So they have to give you the range. You're still technically based on the best execution when policy. the market opens. Yeah, and if you're putting the order, but you buy when the market opens. Yeah, yeah but no, then yeah, you can yeah. dictate. You can say limit order. I want it only for this price. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want it to buy. You know, yeah. you can do it that way. You know, you have your option. I'm just saying, but if you're just saying, okay, here's 200 pounds, just buy it for me whenever I'm going to sleep. And I wake up yeah. and I find, then they would execute based on the best execution policy. So they would actually buy it like on the, the difference between the high, and, like the bid ask, mm-hmm. the high and the low, and they would meet you in the middle. So usually you're on the mid price. Yep, absolutely. Now the general answer to that, or the general um, where that most people go to invest is the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, and that is open U.S. time, Eastern time, Eastern Standard Time, from 9:30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. That's where most of the stocks are being. Well, if you know, like most of them, then the second largest is the London Stock Exchange. That's because a lot of the forex is done there, as well as uh, London Stock Exchange used to also be the whole European Stock Exchange. So you can imagine how big it is. Uh, uh, OTC investments. <laughs> yeah, so OTC funny. investments. I got burned by one of these recently. So let me tell you about them. I made money and I got burned by one. So it's both. OTC investments are over-the-counter investments. Yes, they're cheap and you can get a bang for your buck. I mean, no, the, your dollars, your money is stronger with them than I know you're buying it for cents or $1 or $2 compared to Tesla, which is at $700. But no one thing. These are the highest risk, uh, risky assets because uh, I'll give you this company called CTRM or Caster Marathon. Now, it's a popular stock because everyone is talking about it. What they are is a shipping company that recently, because of Corona, they realized they have a lot of money in their, in their pocket. So they started buying more uh, ships to start moving more and more stuff around. So everyone said, oh, oh when Corona is over, they're going to make so much money. The stock was at 90 cents. It went up to like almost $2. And everyone was just buying, buying, buying. So a lot of people bought it at two dollars. Today it's at 40 cents. So every every person that bought it at two dollars, imagine you bought a thousand shares for two dollars each. That means for every share you bought, 
for two dollars, you lost a dollar and sixty cents. Now multiply that by a thousand, you lost. Yeah, let's just yeah, put it that way. Like, but that's like with OTC investments, they can be something which could become something like uh, like a lake resource. Exactly. Resources. Lake resources, like lake resources, you resources. know, that could become something with their mining capabilities. But yeah, they, this they, is a still, company. It's still an OTC, it's still a penny because they still haven't mm. given you actual hard evidence. Like this is what we want to do, this is what we're doing, yeah. this is what we can do, but they're not actually giving you the hard evidence of oh, yo, this is what we've done. That's an OTC yeah. speculation. It's literally like. Up one day, down the other day, literally just riding the wave, yeah, like a rodeo. This it's like you know, they just go and get off the horse. كأنك دخلت في اسم شنو في سوق ال سوق الفواكه عن تلك لخمسمية بتيخ قدامك وبتشيل تواحدة قلت دي حتكون حلوة. That's OTC. Exactly, it's your luck. The mal hello, the mal masura. No, either this or that. So always, always be. يعني there is. We'll get to this in the other sessions. But for a general basic answer, if you're a beginner, don't do OTC as well. Like, I, no, 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 no. I'm not going to say don't do anything. It's all up to you. I'm a little bit in. It's your money. But be aware of how much risk you want to take. Um, is cryptocurrency a good investment? Does it work in the same way? Uh, There's more to it. The second answer is the easier one. It does not work in the same way. No one actually un- fully understands how cryptocurrencies work when it comes to their prices, especially Bitcoin. But no, but it's based area? on the blockchain. The idea that you build something on a secure network and infrastructure mm. that cannot be duplicated or copied. The no, but I think that... he means uh, from a uh, what's it called um, a demand supply standpoint. Yeah, Mister Dogecoin. Or one of the alternative right. coins. Yeah, yeah, but that's got like hundreds of millions in circulation. Dogecoin. That, exactly. My, that's the issue. A Bitcoin that. has 24 million in circulation. So the idea is with Bitcoin, they basically they've issued a set number of coins. Every, mm-hmm. like, I think every day or every, like, set number of hours, the hash rate or the amount, the mining rate halves. So the amount of Bitcoin out million. there falls, Vimta. So there will only yeah, be 24 million Bitcoins available. There won't be any more after that. But, right, but let me tell you why it doesn't work in the same way. Um, every stock, every company, it works it with supply and demand. People buying from one side, people buying from the other side. But then there are living people, there are living entities that you can research. Yani, the accounts, data sharika, their balance sheets, their sales their research, forecast, yada, yada, yada. That's the problem with Bitcoin. We're still developing that, that world where Bitcoin is going to be the dollar. But at this moment, I can't tell you uh, alternative currency. It's becoming like that nothing. because now on crypto.com, you can use cryptocurrency to purchase. For anything. Yeah. For anything. Like because it's Bitcoin, tight to Visa now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So let's say this. Bitcoin's a man, when it first started, some people suggested that it, it will only just be a one currency for the whole world. So we don't need foreign exchange. Then some people said, no, 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 no. It's more like gold, where if the market is falling and you don't want to lose your money, you put it in Bitcoin because like gold, it will just stay there. And then other people were like, no, no, no. This is the future. Bitcoin is going to change even how governments work. So they went crazy and put all and the changing money. how the settlements of the market work. Instead of taking two days for you to mm. register that you bought the share and the money to hit your account and their account, Bitcoin so will do not, it in two hours, for example. Exactly. Because so of the blockchain the is so quick and robust. Exactly. And you know, blockchain is running eight hour windows. That's a whole different thing that we'll explain at some point. But they don't they trade 24 hours, 24-7, every day of the week. Continuous market. That's what They're it is. Never, Same as commodities. Never commodities are continuous markets. They're 24 7. Stocks, they close on holidays. Hey, you guys have a feel of Yeah, hey, low fee snow day. It's like a regular job. Now, let's. What is What's a Naga, Naga trader? I have no idea what that is, man. Yo, I read that like 16 times while we were talking, trying to figure it out in my head. And no. No idea. Uh, 
Do you have any book or video recommendations for those who want to learn about investing and the stock market? Oh, I have a lot for you. A lot. Yeah, there's some there's some good material out there. Um, I would say. Uh, I'm gonna put the. Not essays. just your conventional Warren Buffett. There's some good stuff by Michael Mendelson actually that you can read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is one of my favorite. This one, uh, essays of Warren Buffett, and. Uh, Ray Dalio, come on, yeah, yeah, I'm I, Ray Dalio. I, Ray Dalio. Oh, I forgot his book uh almanac there we go charlie yo this one this one i just read recently amazing amazing book um there is an app but i don't know how to i don't want to plug an app here as i'm a limp that summarizes books for you uh there's also charlie mungo almanac and i have a few books that yani i would swear by me are my favorite to understand yani, that helped me understand it. So how to assume out uh, the laws of wealth by Daniel Crosby. Laws of wealth. There we go. This book. Uh, let me think it. This is a good book to change. Yeah, and it's about changing your habits and how to invest and cycles and people and how people like think of investments uh these are this is my last book my list i'm sorry the intelligent investor this ben graham is um one of the mentors of uh, warren buffett he created the whole system that he that guy runs on and till today he's economist theory economic theories and how to create wealth are legendary in the in the field um i'll leave it to you from now okay i would say um the books i would recommend are just get it off sorry yeah i would say definitely a good book in general I would say more than you know, uh, by Michael Mabelson. Think mm. twice, by Michael Mabelson. Um, I would say also as well the 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 the, the success equation by Michael Mabelson. I would also say check out Principles by Ray Dalio. Really really good book. Does how like everything mm. works. Um, also, I recommend the book called The World by Richard Haas. It's a bestseller. It tells you how all these things work, and you can use that like advantage. Um. And I would also advise, of course, the intelligent investor. Um, and I would say, look at. Um, I'll actually drop you guys a link here for the uh, the Michael. Uh, um, can you type in Michael Mabelson into Michael J Mabelson into your Google search so you can drop them a link? Michael J Mabelson, M A B O U S S I N. Yeah, my Mabusi. Mabusi. Okay, which so, book? I'm sorry. Oh so yeah, check out his. Uh, just type in no, not books. Just type in Michael Mabelson papers. Mm. His oh, books okay. are good. His books are good, but you can find his papers. So you can value walk guy. I'll put the link. Here. I want everyone to check this out. There's some really, really good. I'll tell you a paper to look at. Go back on the site. Um. There you go. Nice. I'll tell you a good one to start with. So there's really, really good papers. For example, um, see all of these are, are papers you can look into. We go down. You have his books and you've also got his papers. Go down further. His articles are really good to read. So like, you know, and his published papers, like I, I, I read, um, I read a lot of these actually, and these articles are really, really good as well, um, and they will really help. They help, especially people understand the basics, like the. You have the, to read. No, no, go back, yeah, man, go back to that page. Uh, I want to like highlight, pick out some papers for them to start out with. 
the videos will probably help you as well. The videos pretty much cover what he's talking about. I'd say, yeah, go through the videos. Um, and it'll help you, like, probably get into then, like, reading some of the stuff. But, yeah, I'd say read his articles and stuff. And he has some good, um, he has some good books. The books as well, I've listened to them by, by Audible. So that's good as well, because I don't have the time. He's always just sit there with work and that. So, like, I just listen to it while I'm on the go and stuff. But, yeah, like, his articles are great. <laughs> Audio books. Uh, audio books. So the books he's produced, listen to them on Audible. Oh, really, really good. Someone asked me about blockchains earlier. Asked us about blockchains. Read this book. This book explains to you in detail, in a very nice, not boring detail, how blockchains in general work. But then it goes into Bitcoin and all the big boys and stuff like that. But in a general sense, this will explain a lot of things to you when it comes to how they work um, and why they are there, who created what and everything, the potential, all of it. Yeah. Ahmed, I'm going to get off because I need to sleep soon. I need to get some sahur in. Sahur in? Oh, four and a half hours, yeah, man. We're going to and happy Adil. Anyways, guys, yeah, let's let's uh, end it on the high note of I don't even know who's left. Well, and I assume that if people left, I would I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, <laughs> no, but everyone, I really, really hope you guys um, enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. Um, you know, if you have any feedback, any questions anything please do not hesitate to reach out either to us as the m page whichever way we're here for you next week we will be back with one more um now that we've gone through the basics um and we'll put the recording out uh just go through it enjoy it um get some notes whatever you guys need and next week when we come back, any questions you have, please, we'll do it before the session. Or we'll get yeah. into the harder stuff, maybe, like another layer on top of that. With this, you'll have the foundation. Amr and out. Amr and Amr out, man. You like to go, like, lie down and read some Quran or something. Or get your mother. Yeah. I'm going to go pass out. <laughs> Appreciate everybody. Um, thank you as well. Thank you, man, as always. On to next week, inshallah. I'm squared next week. See ya. I'm squared. <laughs>